that those are the real concerns at the moment. Real incomes are not rising. There are genuine concerns. Even service sector, which was doing well, September figures not so good. Are you worried about incomes uh, remaining stagnant, uh, uh, Dr. Basu? Uh, yeah, well, uh, first of all, I think uh, it's important to understand that India has been through, of course, a very difficult period with, with, with COVID. Uh, but if you look at... Uh, but it's uh, not just I, COVID. Right? Sorry to, it's not just COVID. From demonetization post-2017, oh, we've had please. a difficult I mean, time. <laughs> no, Look no. at growth numbers. Uh, look at GDP look, numbers. By the way, let me just point out that real GDP growth per capita between 2014 and 2019 mm -hmm. uh, was the fastest of any five-year period in India's history. So uh, that, that is simply a fact. Uh, perhaps uh, Taimur can look up the data uh, as well. Uh, but that is simply a fact. That 2014 to 2019, mm -hmm. uh, per capita income grew at a faster pace during that five years than during any previous five-year period in India's history. Now, from uh, 2017 course, to 20, a, just a, a minute, from 27, sorry, now, 2017 to 2020, we had about nine speak, quarters of declining speak, GDP. Go ahead. <laughs> what? Declining GDP? You're, you're, you're living in some... In, in terms in, of growth, an rate, universe, growth, growth is, rate now, per let, quarter between 2017 and 2020 registered a con constant decline. The fact was that it was pre-COVID. Pre-COVID, there was one year of deceleration. But during that year, 2019-20, India was still growing faster than all of Asia except China. Right. And... Last two years, India has actually outpaced China by quite a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and India is the world's fastest growing economy. So uh, let's just get the facts at least in place before mm -hmm. we start arguing about other things. Now, with regard to the fiscal points that uh, 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 Ajit Ranade made, let me just point out that uh, this year, the, if you look at corporate tax revenue, personal income tax revenue, and GST revenue, the three biggest sources of tax revenue, they are growing at, uh, at a far faster pace, all growing over 25% year on year uh, in, in the first five months of the fiscal year, much faster than projected in the budget. And as a result, the fiscal position, if you look at net market borrowing by the government in the year to date, it is growing much slower mm -hmm. than was expected in the budget. Mm -hmm. So as a result, in fact, India is fiscally in a much better position than was expected even at budget time. Right. Now, as a result, I think we are going to see a, a revival in private investment spending. And in fact, that is already coming through. There's lots of evidence of private investment picking up. Uh, of course, you know, your, new, your, your magazine has just uh, put out a, a, a good, good report on uh, on the lack of private investment spending, but this isn't true just of India. Across the world, no, private investment has been you know, weak that, for a the decade. You know, the, the, word, the that, word we've used in that report is dormant. Recovery, you know, private investment remains dormant. Private no, no, investment no. at the moment remains dormant. That's what we've said. Investment spending is picking up. Uh, if you look at the GDP data, real investment spending is up strongly in mm -hmm. each of the last three quarters. So, we are beginning to see the first evidence. Now, if you look at you know, if you look at major corporates, they've been announcing, for instance, just one company, ArcelorMittal, is talking about investing in a single state in Orissa, 24 million tons of new steel capacity. Mm -hmm. That would be a 20% increment on India's steel capacity at the moment. Just one company. If you look at the announcements from Reliance, it's a massive investment. Just two weeks ago, mm -hmm. the, the Economist magazine talked about the $90 billion uh, investment plan of the Tata Group. So there is, in fact, uh, a widespread uh, positivity in, in the corporate sector. They are looking to do a, a huge amount of investment. And it's not, this isn't, sure. this isn't pie in the sky. This is actual stuff that is coming let, on, that let, is about to come let on me take, Let me take what you are saying to Ajit Ranade, because Ajit Ranade, there is, as uh, you know, Dr. Basu suggests, there are some, uh, straws in the wind that suggest the worst is certainly over, that we are moving faster than other parts of the world, and therefore there could be, while the finance minister is calling on industry to revive the animal spirits, there are some hopeful signs. Do you believe 
that given what is happening across the world, therefore we remain better placed. That's the best way to see the situation at the moment. Or do you believe that there will be these global headwinds that will particularly affect the capacity of private investment to further uh, you know, go in for major projects, that the informal sector in particular is something to be worried about? Well, Rajdeep, as you know, the finance minister in a very recent interaction was exhorting the Indian industry in India, Inc., saying, why are you guys not investing? So clearly, she is not satisfied with the rate of investment spending that Mr. Basu is saying. And I think investment spending to GDP, especially private sector investment spending, is, uh, is, is uh, not growing vigorously at all. A few projects that he mentioned, of course, may, may be on the, in the offing. But the fact is that investment spending is not growing the way it must grow. Secondly, uh, we might be very well seeing the K-shaped problem that we saw last year. Basically, the high-end corporates are doing very well. In fact, high inflation in the economy, relatively high inflation, is, is benefiting you know, the metal sector, is benefiting the you know, FMCG products, is consumer products. But the K-shaped recovery, a very stark example of that, is uh, high-end vehicles like luxury cars are, or SUVs are doing very well, whereas the two-wheeler sales, scooter and tractors, are below their pre-pandemic levels still. So their growth is very tight. So it actually this is the way to to uh, you know uh, combine these two views that it's no doubt the advanced tax collections by the corporate sector, which is enjoying higher profitability, banking sector is enjoying higher profitability, but that's to the organized sector. But the large unorganized sector and the informal sector is really, really struggling. Mm -hmm. You know, in the SMEs, the small, micro, medium enterprises, out of 63.5 million enterprises, more than 95 or 98 percent are small, micro, medium. Right. They are hurting for sure. You and know. you have seen the job data on the jobs is is not so. You know, so the, I don't think we can be complacent. We might be seeing good news. We have the second richest person in the world, the second most wealthiest person in the world from India. So of course there is a cause for celebration, but we must recognize that we must be seeing a much more pronounced K-shape. Why do you think we are running a free food grain program for 80 crore, 800 million pill for 33 months? Surely if the economy is doing so well, we shouldn't have to be providing free food grains to 80, 810 million people for such a long time. Because I think there is a concern mm -hmm. that the bottom part of the economy, they, they need help, will yeah. probably need much more fiscal help in times of, because of higher food inflation. And But however, hopefully the tax collection because of the organized sector will help the fiscal arithmetic of the government.